Hello and good morning, everyone. I almost said good afternoon, but in some places it's good afternoon, especially in the wandering Dutch uh, part of the woods where it's 3 p.m. in the UK. Uh, welcome to a very special Breakfast at Boom. Of course, I'm your host, Mr. Boomstick XL. And I say special because guess what, ladies and gentlemen, in the United States and probably almost around the world, Easter will be happening this weekend. And like Mrs. Boomstick and I, do for big holiday events. We enjoy giving back to the community, and we will be doing so today uh, with our annual uh, digital gift card uh, giveaway. It's going to uh, total $300 uh, for $50 gift cards as well as four $25 gift cards, and we will announce those live on the air. And all you got to do is be a uh, be in the chat to win. Uh, and if you are a channel member, which we have two new channel members of the already today, which is amazing, and I'll get to that in a second. Or you drop a super chat, you get an additional entry, and those names are put into a picker where it will pick the winner, and we will get you those codes by this afternoon. Because of course, I got to go to GameStop to get them. Because you know what, I get points on the back end of spending a lot of money at GameStop. So it's it's your back, your hand washes my hands, right? So, but before we get into the topics, we have some really good ones, folks. We're going to be talking about uh, a, a, some Embracer Group. We're going to be talking about SIE, PlayStation, and Tencent. And these three uh, conglomerates continue to add to their dominance in the gaming industry. And Microsoft seems to be under a microscope. And we're going to ask why that is. And, of course, we have new information from Jeff Grubb, friend of this program, friend of the community, where we now know that there is not going to be a May event for Microsoft, that they are, in fact, going to have an E3 style or level event in June. And we're going to kind of talk about that, what we expect, and can they outdo what they did last year? But before we get into the topics, folks, let's welcome in the panel and our two special guests and the first one comes all the way from the north part uh where it's snowing folks and i'm jealous mrs boomstick and i are very jealous he is below zero it's snowing like crazy but he's still here for our entertainment no no come what's up brother hey man the weather in canada might be cold but hey breakfast of boom is always hot it's good to be back especially you know <laughs> considering that i've got three more podcasts in the docket before i take a serious leave of absence but it is really good to be here you got an amazing panel some great topics this is going to be a dynamite show so settle in buckle up let's get ready to go boomstick style baby well i definitely appreciate that and of course while you take your hiatus how long however long that's going to be obviously you're going to be missed and hopefully you will be making some guest appearances here or there True. uh as sometimes we all have to pull unplug a bit and take a take take you know take some time off to you know gather our thoughts you know turn the direction of our <laughs> shows and 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 obviously we ho all hope that that works for you new because uh you are a big part of the community and uh, we'd love to see you come back at some time or well, you another. Know, Nick, if you're familiar with my podcast, I probably need to take some time away for a good anal cleansing. Not ah, well. Listen, you know, <laughs> if that's what you have to do, then sir, then that's what you have to do. Listen, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> but listen, all the way on the other side of the world, uh, we have a friend, uh, brother, who is a part of uh, primetime gaming on a weekly basis. He's been a huge asset to the that particular show, as well as being the voice and the leader of his own show. Uh, Wandering Dutch, brother, welcome, man. It's great to have you here. Yeah, it's awesome. Awesome to be on here. And obviously, we've got uh, Mag stand in today, Newf Nukem, uh, bringing that Canadian representation. So, yeah, <laughs> good, uh, good to be on the show with Newf this week. Um, but yes, awesome, awesome to be on. Uh, of course, it's a it's a bank holiday over here, so we've got the Friday and the Monday off, as well as obviously the weekend. So nice long weekend here. So it was only right to be able to just jump in and have have some awesome conversation with you guys. Yeah, well, it's great. It's certainly great to have you here, and uh, we definitely appreciate you joining us today. And of course, we got to welcome in the regular panel now, Crispy Bomb, one of the best voices in the business. He is off. Uh, he took the day off. He'll be back next Friday. So of course. Uh, we will see him uh, next Friday to continue on, you know, continue with his incredible opinions. But we still have three members of Breakfast with Boom that are here for us. And the first one comes to us. Dreadpool, what's going on, brother? How the heck are you, man? And what did you have for breakfast? Good morning, everyone. Yes, uh, today we um, we had. Uh, well, you know how everybody decides to have breakfast for dinner 
So I did the opposite of the opposite. I ended up having breakfast for breakfast. I don't know why, but honey, honeycombs <laughs> was a cereal pick of today. You know, honeycombs not bad cereal. Yeah, I, I, I had it. boring cereal. I had basic four. <laughs> oh no, uh, I'm still a kid. It's good, so. but it was, you know, it's just standard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm still a kid, so I'm gonna suffer when you know, as I get older. I am old. But <laughs> anyway, yes, we have snow in Miami here too, Noof. So it's not the same, but maybe it is. So yeah, welcome everyone. That worse. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we're gonna have a good show tonight. Today, oh yeah. Tonight, no no tonight, doubt about that. Morning. Yeah. Well, listen, we appreciate you being here, brother, and uh thank you so much. And of course, stay away from that snow in Miami. Very, very <laughs> illegal and dangerous. Oh, <laughs> Web Dave, what's going on, brother? How the heck are you? I'm doing great, boom man. Thanks so much for having me, having me here, and a regular panel member. I'm so excited for today's show, man. We have got some great panel members today, and uh, Wandering Dutch, he's my favorite. Just so you know, love you, Dutch. Yay, let's get to it. <laughs> His subjects are awesome. <laughs> Well, listen, Dave, it's great to have you a part of the show. And last in no way, Lee, someone that has really been, a, again, another a huge asset to Breakfast at Boom since he arrived, and that is Fuzzy Belvedere. How the heck are you, brother? I'm doing good. Thank you guys for having me. Man, awesome to be here with you guys. Oh, a lot of a lot of gaming topics to talk about today, so let's get to it, man. Yeah, so you know what? Let's let, let, let's jump right into it because uh, we're going to open up with uh, the scrutiny that ha we have seen in... Uh, in the news recent weeks with Microsoft, uh, we saw a lot of the uh, U.S. senators jumping on the bandwagon and grandstanding. And, you know, obviously uh, we know that that is just so they can uh, people can know who they are when they go to vote. Uh, it's a, it is an election year. A lot of these people are not, they do not want to lose their seats. So, of course, why not stick your name to the biggest uh, 70 billion dollar deal to happen in the last uh, three decades? Right. So we've seen that we've seen uh, some new some new information uh, came out of uh, California. Uh, you know, obviously, they, they, they've been at the forefront of the lawsuit against Activision, um, you know, for the way they treated their employees. And, and we all believe that that is, in fact, uh, a worthy cause. But we've seen um, a lot of political grandstanding there as well. And what seems to have been left out of the video game conversation, because really that, folks, that is what we he are here to talk about, is how companies like Tencent and Embracer Group and SIE PlayStation have come out publicly to say that we are now really in it for the consolidation of the industry. And I have some, some uh, news that I pulled. Uh, the first one is from shacknews.com where Embracer CEO says company will continue its acquisition spree. Uh, uh, Embracer Group has made, uh, and, and just so you guys know, um, since 2020, they have made a staggering 62 acquisitions, folks. Since 2020, we're now in only 2022, 62 so uh, in a piece by the Financial Times, co-founder and CEO of Embracer Group, Lars Wingsfors, reported plans to continue acquisitions like that of Gearbox back in 2021. According to Wingsfors, there are plans to make similar number of acquisitions to ones previously seen from Embracer with a total of 62 acquisitions having been made since 2020 for the price of $8.1 billion. Now, just so we can bring Sony into the mix and see what Jim Ryan has been up to, well, sp uh, speaking uh, on the latest PlayStation podcast, SIE president Jim Ryan confirmed that the platform holder is working on further deals to buy developers. And PlayStation's Jim Ryan has also confirmed in this interview that Sony has more acquisitions planned beyond the recent buyouts of Bungie and Haven Studios. Now, I don't have any quotes for Tencent, but why do I need it? Because they're always in the news. And I'm going to go first to our guests, and we'll start with New Wandering Dutch. Dutch, this to me seems like at some point it's a witch hunt for Microsoft because uh, Sony continues to add, I mean, again, 
in the last 18 months, they have a- added seven studios. That's a known fact. You don't even have to go digging, right? Um, Embrace a group since 2020. And again, let's just let's just kind of look at this at the big picture. We're only in 2022, folks. Okay. 62 studios purchased, acquired by Embrace a Group, who now sits at nearly 80 studios. Um, Tencent, what could you say about this uh, Chinese investment company? Their hands are everywhere. So it really does beg the question, does Microsoft have any fear of this deal not going through? I Listen, I'm, I'm not a lawyer. I don't know. But I don't think so when you put all of these very attainable stats by someone like me who doesn't have a law degree, who only is using common sense and something called Google to find these things. What are your thoughts on this? Yeah, I don't, I don't think Microsoft are, uh, are concerned at all. Um, you're right about <clears throat> Tencent, who are a bit more hands-on with the studios they acquire. Um, they actually want to do new projects and, yep. and create new things and get involved in Metaverse and NFTs and all of that malarkey. So Tencent is a big worry. Um, obviously, it's also for the Western side of things, Tencent's obviously over the Asian um, aspect. So um, the, the the Asian market and, and the consolidation from there, I think, is a different thing that the um, the Western governments, et cetera, will be looking at um, to see whether or not to um, agree with certain things that are going on in Western acquisitions just to ensure that the Tencent um, kind of buyouts and the ten cent purchases um, are, are kind of equaled. Um, Embracer Group, on the other hand, um, I know from personal experience, they're a bit more hands off. Um, they're more of a, an acquisition to ensure the the ongoing growth of individual studios to allow them to do what they want to do. Um, essentially, a financial backer. They're based in Sweden, the European based Embracer, Embracer Group. Um, so it's it's a bit of a different outfit over there. Um, that said, consolidation as a whole, in my personal opinion, um, I'm okay with it as long as in terms of the it's the big three that are profiting out of this three. And I say that because it's the big three that are keeping the industry really afloat and pushing the industry forward. Um, so if PlayStation are acquiring, if Xbox are acquiring, and even if Nintendo are acquiring and keeping the vast majority of these studios in this in the initial circle, um, then I am okay with that. The reason I'm saying I'm okay with that is because, of course, we're not getting this outside influence that's trying to do things Correct. That otherwise harm the industry. Um, obviously, if you have a look at Google's attempt at Stadia, that didn't go very well. Um, then you had Amazon's attempt, which is, is still ongoing, um, but I don't think they're going all in um, to the extent that Google tried to with this streaming um stick that didn't really work and <laughs> um, the streaming platform it's, it's still there somehow um but is is really dwindling and dwindling fast um it's not easy to get into the the hardware market um and to be honest it's it's um a, 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 a not an already failed endeavor to even attempt to get into the hardware market at this point um, Nintendo have absolutely nailed the more the kind of mobile um, gaming platform with with their products um, since day dot. Um, f- since moving from the the home um, console market, the, the original Super Nintendos and Nintendos and N sixty fours and GameCube, and going strictly to more of a a handheld market. And obviously, we know with the the Switch, um, there is a docking mode, but the vast majority of users, of course. Um, are using that in in portable, um, which is why they brought out the Switch Lite, which was not dockable. Um, so they've they've got that marked down, um, and both Sony and Microsoft have got the home console situation absolutely under lock and key. Um, there's no way of getting close to them, um, and of course both of them have got partnerships with uh, with AMD um, to to kind of push them forwards and pushing technology forwards pushing software and architecture forwards. Of course, both of them collaborating with uh, Epic and an Unreal Engine to ensure that that engine's pushing the industry forwards. Um, so consolidation as a whole, as long as it's within the the, the big three, I think is, is okay. Um, and I've always said as well, specifically over for this generation um, that we're seeing going forwards, it's not so much going to be 
I don't believe anyway, a, a case of timed exclusivity anymore. I think the days of timed exclusivity are dwindling. I think the the, the new exclusive or the new timed exclusive will be um, service based. So which service gets the games the most, etc. Um, and I think a lot of these companies as well, as you've seen with the Bungie acquisition um, and potentially even parts of the uh, the Activision Blizzard acquisition um, are to, to ensure that those are kept within house um, and kept um, to uh, away from the likes of Tencent um, so they can't be purchased by them. Um, and ensure that it's it's kept up to a decent standard, and obviously then going forwards, um, parts of Bungie's um, future materials are remaining on all platforms, um, as are parts of Activision's um, materials remaining on all platforms, and uh, to ensure that the industry as a whole doesn't suffer either. Um, so I think personally, it's I think the 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 part that the media are scared of, or certain parts of the media and potentially some politicians, are more just the sheer buying power that Microsoft have um, compared. No, to... No, that's just called uh, good, good business. And, is, and like I it said, it, it when it you took, look, it at... took a very long time for them to get up to that stage as well. Though um, that is Microsoft correct. was never always the juggernaut. It was it was never always, um, uh, and financially, I'm speaking. It was never always going, kind of um, competing on the same level as Sony, etc. When they first started, um, but it has grown to that. They've dominated the PC market and software specifically. Um, they then went on to dominate in terms of the hardware, and of course, Dell was was much part of that for a very long period of time, and still is, of course. And um, they've still got their own hardware. Um, so it's you know it is it's. It is good to see all of them getting their hands into this and, and, and making stout acquisitions. Um, some of them make sense. The vast majority of them make sense, to be honest. Um, on Sony's side, it's always people that they've worked with for a very long time. Bungie was a bit of an outlier. They obviously have worked with them, but um, obviously that was up to Bungie to say, listen, we are remaining completely independent, even though we're required here. We are doing our own thing. And we're still keeping things on se separate platforms. We're just assisting Sony with future development progress and helping them with metaverses and um, games as a service games and things. So it, it makes sense. I just think from a media perspective, they're just a bit scared of the, the sheer buying power of, of Microsoft and Xbox um, and what they could um, acquire. The difference is I think Microsoft aren't looking to make another acquisition blizzard um, level acquisition anytime soon i think going forwards um you may see maybe he's a smaller publisher in the future but nothing to the same standard of that um but you'll definitely see studios being acquired um we know they're partnered with uh, several that are under kind of should we say a trial period right now to see yep. how they perform avalanche um, crystal dynamics yeah uh, so, io interactive so these definitely the, I, I i certainly expect all three of those along with several others that we'll get into to yeah. eventually become first party studios but buying a studio will certainly be a heck of a lot easier than buying a publisher and i agree with you i think that after this do you, you i don't they, they, i don't think they go for like a ubisoft or an ea yeah. or anything or a capcom i, I you know I what it is don't... i think i think ubisoft are already going to be benefiting we we've seen the fact that ubisoft plus is coming to console yep um obviously it's coming to xbox and in, in the coming months um so their service is going to benefit there there's there's no doubt going to be some kind of tie-in deal with game pass or game pass ultimate for ubisoft plus when that comes to the console um, so they're going to benefit on certain ways with a partnership that way. So I don't think Ubisoft require it. Um, Ubisoft perform well um, and make a lot of money without a buyout um, for all of their games. So I don't think they're concerned. I think the benefit here for smaller studios um, and acquisitions is to ensure their ongoing, um, should we say, lifespan. Um, their, their survival going forwards. We know the the cost of not just living, but the cost of development, the cost of, of staff, um, and everything right now is absolutely through the roof. So um, in order to maintain survival of some of these studios, acquisition is almost a necessity, and they'll be going and vying for somebody to, to take them on board as a first-party studio to ensure that they can continue to 
to to exist. Yeah, to, to actually be be around because you're yeah. absolutely correct. There there is going to come a point where if you're not with one of the bigger publishers, you you're going to be considered indie. And you know, but listen, it's, it's, no- yeah, it's not just that. I think it's 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 specifically just the fact that the the cost, as we know, just from from our own day to day lives, the cost of living has is through the roof. skyrocketed. Yes, so let, let alone trying to run a company right now, where of course we're only paying for our our gas, electric, etc., for our own homes, and that's Correct. expensive. We're now looking at these companies here, and I, obviously I deal within the, the brokerage, brokering of energy um, for for businesses. Um, and if you think if you think residential kind of utility costs are, are through the roof, you have a look at business side of things, mm-hmm. and it's it is almost six to seven times the cost um, of of what a residential cost is right now. So um, it is there is going to be a lot of businesses closed down and without somebody with the financial back and then firepower of, of one of these big three, a lot of these indie companies will, will cease to exist. Yeah, no, dude, you knocked it out of the park as expected. Uh, you're hundred percent right. And that's what you don't want to see. You yeah. don't want to see companies uh, be, uh, be choked out by inflation. And yeah. I hate to say this, that's that's something that that's a that's a sad reality right now because everything is expensive. I've talked about this before and joking. Cream cheese here in New York for a bar of cream cheese is seven dollars, seven, seven ninety-eight, almost eight bucks. You know, gas over here is almost five dollars a gallon. It's, no, it's that's, that's cheap. That's cheap, boy. That's, that's cheap. <laughs> Double that's lot cheap. over here. Yeah, yeah. Double Double lot over here. And, and there you go. Listen. Before we get into uh, uh, Noof Nugum's opinion, I want to thank Rahitri Gaming, who says this. Hit the like button. It takes two seconds. And yes, we have almost 300 people here, so let's get up the likes, folks. Come on, for crying out loud. And also, I have to catch up with some of the Super Chats and some new uh, 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 channel members. The first one, the new channel member of the day, comes to us from Sith Lord. Thanks so much for be, uh, becoming. Uh, he joins. Uh, what, here comes the boom. Thank you so much for that. And V Mac Man has become a channel member. Thank you for that, dude. I super appreciate that. And welcome to the program. We also have some super chats that have come in. Sith Lord not only dropped, not only became a channel member, but dropped a super chat. And he says this after dropping a five dollar super chat. Thank you. Mr. and Mrs. Boomstick and panel for always putting on an amazing show. I appreciate your hard work that you put into the show. Well, thanks, brother. We definitely appreciate the compliment and, of course, the generosity. Chaos Theory, who's been a member for two years, 30 months of uh, uh, a channel member, says, um, good morning, crew, and happy Friday. Well, happy Friday to you, brother, and thank you for supporting the channel. My God, over two years, that is incredible thank you for that percolator 9000 drops a five dollar super chat and says good morning panel good morning boom and the day new nukem unplugs is the day the internet will be clean save money on therapy lol take care new nukem <laughs> and bunty so much uh, love but yeah of course okay he's a big fan bunty drops a two dollar super chat and thank you for the generosity bunty it's great to see you here he says welcome everyone happy good friday indeed it is good friday it's good friday for a a multitude of reasons but noof let's get your opinion on it and normally your opinion is raw and uncut and we love that about you uh microsoft has since this this deal has been announced has been getting squeezed by all sides uh the gaming community was very taken aback by this. Um, some positively, some mostly negatively. A lot of the uh, you know internet uh, knuckleheads that we know and hate uh, been out there banging a the drum that they hope that this deal falls through. We've seen people in the government, like the senators who don't know their rear from their elbow, unfortunately, talking about the work you know uh, working conditions when the FTC is there just to make sure that. Uh, the, that we, the customers, aren't being taken advantage of, pretty much embarrassed themselves live uh, by, by, by putting that out there. Um, and now we're hearing um, other businesses in the same video game realm continually and almost uh, brazenly uh, uh, being brazen to say, hey, we're going to continue consolidation because we want to be a better business. And it makes you wonder how there's no scrutiny towards any of these three big conglomerates and Microsoft seems to be getting it clobbered over the head. What are your thoughts on this? Noof Nukem, you're muted, brother. 
Where to, where to start? Where to start, baby? Okay. Okay. First and foremost, Microsoft still continues to live in its own shadow. The shadow of the, you know, of the Microsoft past, the shadow of the Windows company, the shadow that, you know, of the company that the basically boys club. Rose, yeah, the boys club, the shadow of the company that essentially rose to fame by essentially almost monopolizing the PC market for the most part. The thing that people forget is everything that Microsoft buys does not necessarily turn to gold. You know, <coughs> mixer, uh, that sort of thing. <laughs> uh, you know, Microsoft has basically tried to cover all their bases, and I totally respect and understand where they're coming from. You know, the industry has changed. Gaming has changed. Uh, those ecosystems change, and they're trying to stay ahead of the curve. I mean, obviously, they've made a lot of money by spending a lot of money. They continue to do so. It's the old adage, right? you got to spend money to make money. Look, uh, things have changed. Microsoft is certainly leading the forefront in terms of a service-based game company, um, more so than perhaps anyone else. I mean, obviously, Game Pass is huge for them moving forward. They've made that commitment. they got to stick with it. Obviously, content is king. In order for Game Pass to not only be successful today, but successful in the future, they must have content. And again, when you have Embracer Group and Tencent and other likes snapping up all the developers, you know, there's only at, at some point in time, we're going to start running out of things to buy unless you're going to start pumping a lot of money into building things from scratch. We all know how long that takes and how uh, and how crazy that part of it is like doing it from scratch. You're already setting yourself behind five years before you even start to see essentially fruits of the labor. You know, it's kind of like starting up a new business. Um, you know, they spend a lot of money here. But like I said, it's because of their labeling. It's because of who they are that they're going to get scrutinized, that they're under a gigantic microscope. To this point, actually, they're under a telescope. I mean, uh, <laughs> more than a microscope. Everybody is watching these guys right now, what they're going to do. And then there's a lot of fear about, okay, uh, you know, what they're going to do with the properties or the studios or have, moving forward. First and foremost, the one thing that shouldn't be in this equation is the whole what Activision has done in terms of the internals. I'm talking about, you know, the harassment suits and all of this stuff. This part, that part of it, Look, all Microsoft can do at this point is say, you know, once once we, you know, we the, the, the merger goes through, the takeover takes through, whatever. I don't even like that word takeover because it sounds like Darth Vader coming in here. Um, but once that goes through, yes, you know, make promises to make changes where they're due to change the culture, the way of doing business inside the studios. I mean, but, you know, you can't you can't control things that you don't have. Uh, that you know you don't have privy to at, at this point in time but obviously there's going to be a lot of changing of the guard there's going to be a lot of changing of uh, studio executives and things moving forward to make sure that the culture within Activision Blizzard moves forward in the right way um, you know again it's not sometimes it's no it's, it's a it's a like you say it's not about the size of the what's it about the size of the dog it's about the size of the or the, what's that, how's that saying go it's not about the the fight or something with the, 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 the dog. It's not, I think it's a, the, the way it goes. Is it's not about the size of the dog, the but the fight in the dog. The oh, fight yeah. in the dog. Well, that's precisely what we got here. Because you know, ten cents throwing out, you know, and and embracer, they're throwing out all these studio acquisitions, but nothing really for is really as big on a grand scale of things as this Activision Blizzard deal. Because we're talking about essentially, and a large part of this, probably even eighty percent of this, is because of one franchise. That rules the roost. Call of Duty. If you take Call of Duty out of this whole damn equation here, I don't think anybody's freaking out the way they've been freaking out, right? You know, Certain can I ask? Parties. Can I ask? Can I ask a question to you? And I want you to run yeah. with this. Uh, this because this is this is interesting. You know, you bring up an, an amazing point. Call of Duty. Now, I'm going to be honest. I said this on 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 Tuesday's Xbox Factor podcast. Originally, I didn't think. Call of Duty was th that big of a deal simply because of what Activision and Blizzard has. But sitting back and thinking of how many new gamers Xbox is going to acquire once Call of Duty is in Game Pass, the normies, the 85% uh, that made uh, Sony the uh, sell 115 plus million consoles last gen for the PlayStation 4, well, I can, I will, I, I don't want to guarantee because I'm not a business major, but I can say that I, a safe bet, half of those gamers are going to look at Sony and they're going to say, wait a second, the system is $500. 
Each game is 76.43 here in New York, $90 in Canada or $110 uh, in in Canada, 90 in the UK. If I go to Game Pass mm-hmm. and I pay 15 bucks a month, right. I can get this game. I can get this game in there plus 499 other games for that $15 and they have a $300 console, a potentially even cheaper this this fall. And I say that to say this, Anouf, Mm -hmm. you mentioned something very interesting. Everyone's all freaked out about Call of Duty. I can't play Call of Duty anymore. Well, first of all, you still can play Call of Duty. And I believe they're going to leave it multi-plat. And I say, who cares? But this is what's interesting. To that point, these are the same people that were cheering in the streets when Spider-Man, the face of Marvel, has been locked behind a plastic box Mm-hmm. You can't play Spider-Man on uh, on your PC. You can't play Spider-Man on your um, on your Xbox. Sony has that locked down. Now I, I don't know if Spider-Man 2018 is on PC. I don't I don't think it is actually. To be honest with you, I don't I don't know. But no, no. you can't yeah, yeah. play Spider-Man anywhere else. So I don't want to hear from people saying that, oh, I can't play my Call of Duty anymore because it's locked behind a plastic box. When you these same people were cheering in the streets when Spider-Man, the face of Marvel, yeah. was locked behind Sony. But I, but please continue. Yeah, let's not forget Wolverine's coming too now, right? And that is also... And, and, and there's rumors there's a third one that they're working on that they're yep. going to announce during E3 or this summer's you know show. Exactly. No, but you, like you're right on the money. I mean, again, it's largely because of Call of Duty, and let's not forget they don't have that. They also have some other magnificently huge franchises that are licensed to print money, like World of Warcraft, you know, and Starcraft, and and you got Diablo, and other, like they. It's not just it's not a one trick pony here. But the bottom line is, is Call of Duty is the most world renowned, recognizable property, right? And it makes m- massive amounts of money for its competitor. When you know, basically, when you when you come out and you look at the statistics, and you find out that the majority of PlayStations are sold with that game, and that's the game that moves their units more so than their so-called exclusives. You know, that's that's where the eyebrows get raised. You know, Microsoft's not coming out and saying, "Yeah, we plan to pull this game off of the competitor." They don't even have to, like you said. Already, the bonus for Xbox players is. You can be able to play it for your low cost subscription fee, right? And the bottom line is, is who wouldn't want to do that, right? So the competitors are worried that all of a sudden, maybe people stop buying that other plastic box because the one main game that they want to play, why spend, uh, you know, five hundred dollars on their plastic box plus another eighty dollars for that game on that said plastic box, uh, where you can just be playing it, like I said, on your cell phone, your PC, or on Microsoft's plastic box. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> You know, so that's that's where it comes down. You know, I mean, and they're going to use every argument in the book. There's going to be like arguments of like how Microsoft intends to use the studios moving forward. Are they going to retain the talents? Are they going to start consolidating? Are they going to start, you know, unemploying people? Because that's always one of the worries too. You sometimes you see that, you know, they start they start closing this door and opening that door, or merging one into the other. Uh, you know, and, and things don't always pay off. I mean, look at look at the rare the rare the rare the microsoft one of the first big game acquisitions ever in the history of video games when microsoft purchase was that was big yeah and as fans of nintendo at the time a lot of us was like whoa like microsoft's got rare that you know they got their ips uh but really what has microsoft done with rare that's my concerning part is are they going to let studios just kind of wander the vasted wastelands? I, you know what? I don't you think know? so because all you have to do is look what ha- look what happened when they acquired Bethesda. Every one of those studios went on a hiring spree when mm-hmm. they went. You know, in 2018, when they when they picked up those five studios, you know, Ninja Theory and um, Compulsion Games and uh, Obsidian. And, you know, and all every one of those 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 studios immediately started hiring. Now, we did mm-hmm. hear this week that Vicarious Visions, and if you don't know who they are, I feel sorry for you because they're an incredibly talented development house. Well, that studio doesn't exist anymore. Uh, they have they have been infused into Blizzard and their last works were uh they did the Diablo 2 remake they worked on Crash re, uh the Crash um 
remake and the spiral remake. Um, and they yeah. have ridiculous talent, but I, I see your I see your concern. I I don't see that happening. I I just don't. But and I don't I don't think so either because Microsoft is going to need content. They're going. It's not about you know buying this and then closing the doors. It would make no sense. But at the end of the day, I mean Microsoft's main goal here, and I'm sure they you know they're going to say is we we need to drive our Game Pass sales by having the biggest properties in the world. Uh, only allows us to you know expand our audience because if Microsoft was saying you know we're gonna we're gonna pull everything off and just have it on an xbox and you will need this product in order to play any of our games i'd understand where some of the problem is but the fact is almost every home in the world owns a pc almost everybody that i know owns a cell phone it's not like if you don't own a playstation or a or nintendo or a tablet that all of a sudden you're out like you have no options or you cannot play you know, Coca-Cola is the biggest, uh, you know, soft drink manufacturer in the world. And part of the reason is because you can buy them in so many places. You can go to your grocery store. You can get them at the restaurant. That That's why Microsoft is basically pulling a Coca-Cola here. They're putting it in just about everywhere that you can that you can think about gaming. That That's the whole part. Yes, in turn, that's going to make them billions of dollars. But if they invest it back in and they open studios and they create jobs and um, and they keep making great games... I don't understand the big problem, but I'm just going to go back and end it up by saying, again, it's because it's Microsoft, because of their previous reputation in the past, which people got to get over that crap. This is not Microsoft from the 80s. This is not even Bill Gates' machine anymore. This is, you know, this is this is Satya Nadella's boat. This is the Microsoft games division we're talking about. You know, it's not about all the rest of the stuff. And, uh, you know, and, and they have great intentions to do this. And, and sure, I, I get it. The biggest thing is the marketing will have that Xbox banner written all over it, you know, and, and that's amazing. We're already seeing how uh, Paramount Plus is doing things the right way. They got Halo. They got the Halo TV show all over the place now. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm seeing commercial. I see more commercials for that TV show than I've seen for most of the games in the last couple of years. So th I think at the end of the day, that's it. It's just a lot of people making a lot of noise about a lot of uh, insequential stuff. I mean, obviously, because they're worried about how this is going to play out in the future. Look, it's going to still work out for everybody. It's just going to be the best value. It's going yeah. to be if you happen to be in the Xbox ecosystem. That is it. That yeah. is bottom line. Yeah, I mean, I mean, f fantastic points, Dreadpool. Let's bring you in on the conversation. Obviously, you know, you you you've talked about your personal experience with your own companies that you've worked for with uh acquisitions and, and 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 you know people being let go and people being hired this is a particular situation that is a bit of a conundrum for me personally because like i said i'm not a business major um i don't i'm not a lawyer by any stretch of the truth and i and i look at this situation and i it, it to me it reads clear as day everyone else seems to be making these big moves because it's big business it's tech business, but it's big business nonetheless. And we've seen someone like Embrace a Group, who before 2020 had a mere 14 to 18 studios. Now they're closing in on 80 and they intend to buy more. That, some people would dare say, would be used as a monopoly. Well, look at all the studios that they have. That's a monopoly. And we've heard that term thrown around from Microsoft even by some of the people in government. Well, it's going to be a monopoly. Well, folks, let's let's reiterate exactly what this deal would mean for Microsoft. It would put them at 34 studios, a total. 34 versus uh, the near 80 that Embracer Group has. Um, what 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 else would it do for Microsoft that would make it a monopoly? Why it would add more games to Xbox Game Pass, giving its consumers more for their buck. Well, that's what you're supposed to do, and that's, and the government as well as people are supposed to cheer this on. But we've actually heard – I'm not going to mention names. I'm not going to mention podcasts that have said it because we don't do that on this, on this show. But I've heard something to the effect of, well, you know, people feel like they're renting their games from Microsoft uh, Xbox Game Pass, which is ridiculous because you can buy every one of those games at a discounted price if you decide to do so. Uh, Microsoft hasn't pulled any of these of uh, the physical discs off of the uh, off the shelves, and they don't intend to do that either. So when you hear 
all of these other big conglomerates are making these moves and microsoft is literally being bent over a barrel and and and, and the scrutiny towards the company is unlike anything i've ever seen what are your thoughts on that oh i called that last week i mean didn't i say that microsoft by an activision and, and they're going to take call of duty and put Internet Explorer on it, and this is why they have a problem because you're going to be surfing Internet Explorer while you're shooting away. I mean, seriously, this is stupid. The, you know, it's it's all about watch me, look at what I'm doing for you, even though they don't care about us. It's it's all about they them. They certainly do not. That's all it is, right? Yep. And yet again, this is not falling under Xbox. He is reporting directly to Phil. Phil is not the leader of Xbox anymore. He's over Xbox. Yes, he's right? the leader of Microsoft Gaming. Exactly. So they're going to be doing the same thing that Bungie is doing with Sony. Sony's following the same scenario, and Bungie said, hey, you know what? We don't want to be there. We want this. So Sony paid for Bungie to work hand-in-hand -hand with PlayStation. They don't, they're do not they not under PlayStation. And this is the same thing here, right? What is Bethesda? Bethesda is actually a publisher, not just studios, right? So they're doing their own thing. Did they lose any people? No, not really. But guess what? Those the, those employees also have an opportunity to shift around within the company of Microsoft. So the same same thing's going to be said here, you know. So, oh, is is Xbox um, going to go into any um, bad dealings? I mean, you've brought it up earlier. Mixer, you know, they had some issues, um, some other issues that were unknown to the bigger company where Phil actually stepped in and said, hey, DM me and we'll talk. He spoke to that gentleman and they, you know, the gentleman no longer worked for, for Mixer, but Phil still took an interest in it. And, and, you know, this is the company that Satya is pushing, right? Yep. Bill Gates was very, very competitive. And that's why they, they were always like seen as the, 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 the mean company, the company that doesn't care. Why? Because they were looking at being very competitive and hyper-competitive, doesn't care about your feelings, doesn't care about anything. They're willing to win. And that was Bill, right? Satya is willing to do more than that. And that's why Satya is there. That's why Microsoft is excelling. That's why Phil is where he's at too, because they care. And, and these politicians caring for uh, the, the the people in those companies uh, from Activision, like, what are they going to do? They're going. Are you serious? We already have bigger monopolies. Sony's actually said, um, well, actually not Sony. Uh, uh, Jim Ryan said that they're going to go out and and get more acquisitions. They're looking to to buy more studios. So it's like, hmm, what's good for the goose isn't good for the gander here. Is that is that the is that the case? You know what's also interesting to that to that exact point. Okay, is that. Even with the deal, Microsoft is still number three. This is this isn't a situation where Microsoft was thirty eighth in the world and they're going to do this deal and they're back to number one. Right. They're still going to remain as number three, with Sony behind. at number one. Yeah. See, and that, and that's the funny thing. That's that's why it's the oh, well. Well, let me let me let me shift this goalpost over now. And you know, it's about the people because when they buy them out, they're they're going to lose the people. Guess what? If they're still operating as their own company, yeah, they're going to lose some people. But get, you know, but it's it's part of ownership of another company. You're going to filter through. You're going to put some people in place and power that's going to be watching what's going on, um, trying to reestablish profit. Right. So if you're bleeding because of all this what's what do you think's going to happen you know yeah call of duty is not going to be affected regardless you know call of duty is just a, a, a money maker everything else is affected though so when you when you're doing all this you have to make sure you have the right people you know so obviously some people will not like change oh wait that's that's every day <laughs> none of us like change apparently no, no you know what I mean? that's life <laughs> you don't understand you hate it you automatically hate what you don't understand you know, it's new. It's fresh. Oh, my God. No, we got to hate it. You know, connect. Oh, no. But we yeah, here we have uh, Siri and Alexa snooping in on us. Uh, Facebook doing their thing. But that's OK. You know, so and that's that's the whole double standards that I, I find funny that these people are worried about developers and I'm going to buy the game versus renting the game. 
well, this rental isn't a one-time rental that we used to have back in the day. This isn't the GameStop's, uh, I'll buy the game and I'll sell it back to GameStop. Um, you know, brand new game, full price. And I'll sell three it back bucks. to them <laughs> for like, yeah, you know, three to four to five, unless you have the membership, 10 bucks. Mm -hmm. And yet they'll sell it for $5 less. So where, where is the support there? You know, it, it's all this idiocracy that's going on, you know, and, and people follow through and support it and, and, and don't even think for themselves. That's, that's the worst part. You know, some of us are speaking from experience, you know, and our, our opinions are based on the experience, not ignorance of other things, you know? So yes, I, I am ignorant of what the community inside the developers are, but I'm watching what's going on. Just like everybody else, I'm using my experience for, with corporate businesses to see how they they operate and and i'm deciphering the 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 letters in between the spaces and everything on what's going on you know some of these other cats don't do that they just you know oh someone says something good about xbox hate them someone says something good about playstation love them and it's like why what would read it make your own decision you know xbox has done bad stuff too however that was the past Will they continue doing good stuff? No, they will screw up too, you know, and that's the problem. Everybody screws up. There, there will be a person that was a good contender. I had a boss that was that, that my boss's boss had told, because we, we operated without a boss for a while. So th this guy was operating, um, doing his job, but he couldn't, he couldn't fill in my boss's position. So, you know, we, we, we ran the company, our, our part of our division, without a boss. We didn't have somebody managing us, and we still did well, right? And then he brings in somebody that when when they told me who it was, I was laughing at him. I was like, you know, I've covered this guy so many times from doing stupid stuff, um, costing money that he's done before. He's, he's blown up stuff, literally caught on fire, you know, and he's he's done all this, and yet you're going to hire him as my boss. I'm like, you, you gotta be joking. Right. And then when he said, no, is there a problem? And I was like, Nope, I realize where I stand now. Yep. You know, and th th he hired him and he ended up getting fired anyway. <laughs> so this is going to happen no matter what company there will be people that were good potential people that to, to be there and they'll learn their lesson afterwards. You know, they haven't learned a lesson. They, they think they're super and, and they'll do whatever that they want to do. And this is everywhere. And this is what, I, what I, I still find funny that it's like, oh, only Sony does this. Oh, only Xbox does this. Well, what about Embracer? What, you know, yeah. Activision was was a big proponent of doing mischievous uh, acts. Mischievous, yes. Right. So doing that to their own employees, threats, causing um, um, self-termination. Yeah. I, I don't know if I could say that without dinging anything but let you know doing stuff like that causing that you know mm -hmm. but we're worried about microsoft a company yeah, that's yeah, again, uh, let's also reiterate that microsoft uh according to glassdoor which is used by everybody every big uh company in the world is listed as number nine they're in the top 10 of best companies to work for yeah so there's so that nobody's doing research they're just talking out their rear end rears yes <laughs> <laughs> I, I almost said it, but I, I knew not. Nah, to. That's okay. Listen, I'm not we, new. We, 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 a curse every now and jumps out. That's fine. <laughs> but you know what? I, I, you know what I appreciate about you, what you just talked about, is using your personal experience, uh, which is real. Like you can't argue what 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 Dreadpool is saying because he experienced this in real life, and we can equate that to what's happening in business in in, 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 in video game business. And, and I think you, you, again, knocked it out of the park. Um, I absolutely love that. Let's bring in off uh, fuzzy, but fuzzy before I bring you in brother, mm -hmm. let me, um, let me read some of the super chats. We've quite a few of them that have come in Uh pragmatic Eagle. Who's also been a wow, two years, 31 months, as a channel member, brother, thank you so much for that. It's very kind of you. He says, just want to say thanks to Boom and the panel for always providing excellent content for us to enjoy. Everyone be safe and remember to be kind to one another. Dude, 
man, I, 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 I have to hit that with the boomstick approved uh, uh, logo because that is exactly the first of all, thank you for the, uh, the kind words. Thank you for being a channel member. But more importantly, the most important thing is at the end is be, be kind to one another. I, I saw some things happening on on the socials yesterday with people just starting to use names and just be real nasty over an opinion. Don't don't do that. Everyone's allowed to have their opinion, even if you don't agree. Now, you know, don't, don't attack someone for it. That's it's not the kind of behavior we like, uh, for sure. Highlander 001 drops a very generous $10 super chat and says, if the deal goes south, Activision stock will crash and burn and Bobby Kotek will fire. Oh, file for Chapter 11. You're absolutely correct in that. Um, it will be a fire sale for IPs and cash is king. Microsoft gets IPs they want. Yeah, I, l listen, First of all, one of the things that would immediately happen if this deal doesn't go through is Activision is going to be Activision Blizzard is going to be in a position where they're probably going to have to get rid of 50% of their workforce. There is going to be mass layoffs. Um, and, you know, then you have to take and then you have to wonder, it, it, is government actually working for the people, right? Or, or are the people working for the government? Because... You know, you can have your opinions about Microsoft as a company, and I think a lot of the opinions that these knuckleheads in uh, in office have are exactly what uh, everyone has talked about. The boys' clubs from the '90s. That's not the Microsoft of 2022. They haven't been that way for decades. They have cleaned up their act, and it's run by Satya Nadella, who runs a tight ship. And there's a reason why they're number nine in the world as being the best place to work for. Um, the use, the, 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 the use of the word monopoly, uh, you know, at, at the inception of this deal's announcement was preposterous then it's, and it's foolhardy even now because they're not even close to being number one in revenue, even after the deal. And all I have to say is look at Embracer Group. They're closing in on 80 developers. So don't use monopoly because you sound like a boob. So don't do that. Um, uh, so at Highlander is 100% right. They would probably file for Chapter 11 because their stock would tank. There's no doubt about it. It'd be, it would be a fire sale. And Jacob Novick drops not one but two Super Chats. The first one of final says, fun fact, my first ever game I ever played was Spyro 1 on the PlayStation 1, and my brother was born in 91. I got the PS1 from my mom and got that in 2002 when I was two. Damn, you've been playing for a long time. That's awesome. And he drops an additional $2. So Jen says, I mean, my brother was born in 98. I got you. You could have just, I would have read, I would have read it without the Super Chat, but thank you, uh, uh, Jacob. Definitely appreciate that. And Splendiferous. Drops an outstanding two dollars super chat and says, "Good morning, you toxic gents. Xbox is bad, bad Xbox." <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, and we have uh, East Texas Alex. What's up, Alex? How 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 the heck have you been? He drops a five dollars super chat and says, "Good morning, everyone. Great show, guys. Hit that like button. Thank you, brother. Definitely appreciate that." But Fuzzy, let's bring you on the conversation. You've heard what <laughs> everyone had to say. Yeah. What are your thoughts on? the scrutiny that happens to be again the microscope because i if you looked at the thumbnail i have a the the sniper scope on <laughs> xbox with oh uh, yeah and i thought that was pretty funny um <laughs> uh, but it's the truth because it does seem like they're under uh they're they're under the hitman's watch of the government to have this deal uh blockaded but for reasons that don't make any sense what what, what are your thoughts with all of the very easy to attain information about embracer group and tencent and sony mm -hmm. Well, it's much like what Dreadpool was saying. It, the scrutiny, it, it just, and, and even um, um, Newf was saying this as well, as far as like, it's it's not the Microsoft for the, the 80s or 90s type of thing. It, it, the scrutiny, I wouldn't say it's misplaced, but it's it's definitely based on either old information or old viewpoints. It's almost like where people still kind of view American cars as being less quality to, than import cars. In some cases, you may make, make a case for that, but there have been definite strides by a lot of the automotive manufacturers for improvement, and it seems like people still are kind of caught in the 80s and 90s on, on views. But I, I, I just want to make this clear senators are supposed to be for the people they're elected by the people and they're supposed to have the people's best interests california senators aren't the ones that are you know involved in this the, these are you know your more prominent senators from the northeast which 
nothing against the Northeast. I'm in the Northeast, by the fact. But the, the, the key thing is, where were these senators when the allegations first popped up? I mean, there was almost no nope. clear. Down, brother. Yeah, there was almost at least a clear eight or nine months prior to the Activision, you know, uh, acquisition deal of known cases. Even before the lawsuit, there have been known cases <laughs> as far as, you know, it being a somewhat toxic work environment or, or, or hostile work environment. The senators weren't anywhere to be found. I mean, if they were so concerned about accountability, their better opportunity would be to have stepped up then. This is more about a bill that they're trying to, I wouldn't say ramrod, but it, it is kind of one of those deals where yeah. they want to have a bigger spotlight on you know, a lot of these big business acquisitions, which is, it's funny, they don't do it on certain forms of entertainment. Like, what was it? Disney and Fox? That, that should have been a bigger, you know, scrutiny. And, and there've been other movie studios and things like that, that have merged and, and, and whatnot. And well, you know what we just saw, we just saw the uh, FTC try to uh, stagnate the uh, MGM deal with Amazon. Mm -hmm. And what wound up happening is Amazon said, okay, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to sue the FTC because <laughs> now they are doing this uh, almost on spite. And what what did, what happened to the FC, F, FTC uh, uh, stoppage of this deal, Fuzzy? They, they exactly. washed their hands of it. Yeah, exactly. And, and I have a feeling that something like that might occur as well because it, there's no doubt that Activision is going to take a hit if this deal doesn't go through. Sure, they're going to get a nice little check of like three and a half billion from Microsoft because the deal didn't go through. But that's not going to stop their their share price from plummeting. That's not going to stop people from probably a mass exodus because if if this takeover doesn't happen, a lot of the upper management is going to still be in place, and it may be some time before the board gets off off gets off their butts and does anything because they haven't done anything prior. So it, there might be a mass exodus. So you're going to be losing talent. You're going to be losing value or price share of, of of the company, and then it becomes well, okay, now these IPs are up for a bargain bin. So in the grand scheme of things, it might all the things that people are worried about might actually be worse with that ordeal or that that particular uh outcome because well then microsoft could buy call of duty ip for 20 bill and yeah and and well can they don't have to even play nice at that point because it's a fire sale you know at yeah. that point and i don't mean to make jokes of uh, or light of a, a situation like that but look at it this way if activision doesn't get this or if this deal doesn't go through it, it it's going to be a tougher uh, blemish or spot on the gaming industry, not just for from a talent standpoint or employment standpoint, but even just the, the intellectual properties and things like that are going to be all right, all shifted around. And if you're, you know, team PlayStation or team Xbox, you might not be on the right side of things when that deal falls apart type of deal. So it, I, I would say the, the bigger thing is we should worry more about the outside the big three outside of uh, playstation nintendo and xbox like your 10 cents your your meta slash facebook's your your apple and stuff like that then anything else mainly because microsoft is more about keeping their you know uh us base and and you know european base customer base you know, happy and they want to continue to make money. They're, it's not like they're going to buy something to make it a piece of crap just yeah. so they can squeeze pennies out of you. That makes absolutely no business sense. But a company like Tencent, they might say, well, we don't like the political views of this particular country, so we're, not, we're going to stop making this game this way, or we're going to change the whole view of something like a Call of Duty so it's more favorable to our, you know, government's That is absolutely correct. That is a great point. Yeah, they will change it to to bet to the betterment of the scope of their political opinions, correct? So it, it, I, I think the the best thing for people to do is it, when it comes to the senators, you know, cheer them when when they actually do something that affects your livelihood directly in a positive way, but when they try and grandstand for things that may seem on the surface like they're they're championing something for the people, 
look a little closer at what or how long it took them to get on board with that. Like if it was about accountability, they had years to focus on that. Uh, heck, there's even issues within the Senate and in the House as far as, you know, uh, you know, dare I say grab ass, but th- th- they've had issues of harassment in in actual government. So they if they're going to talk have. about accountability, We're laughing, but it's, it's the truth. Yeah. If they're going to talk about accountability, it's like glass house, you know, <laughs> type of deal. But I, at this point, honestly, if if this deal does fail, I hope the the people that are cheering for the deal to fail get everything that's coming to them as far as what would be the alternatives. And and I don't think they're going to be happy with those alternatives, but um, I, the extra scrutiny is, I, I honestly believe it's, it's unwarranted at this yeah. point in time. If it was the eighties or nineties, sure. I could see it, but this, this is a different company. They're trying to be, I won't say more PC, but they're trying to be a more of a global company and well, and you know, global, the, the, you the entertainment to... these days comes in the form of everything from your handheld phone mm-hmm. to your 50, to your 65 inch bells and whistles C1, right? Yeah. So Microsoft is covering all of that. Yeah. And this deal will cover that even further for them. You know, again, you know, you look at the King deal, that's going to be big. I, I, I almost think that, and I've said this numerous times, and I, nobody really believes me until it happens, but mm-hmm. I think uh, Game Pass for, uh, for mobile is going gonna, is gonna to come to fruition. Oh, yeah, uh, it totally makes sense. And, and, you know, $5 a month, and you get these games, and, you know, it, it'll be the games that they put in there, and it's only going to be like 5 bucks a month. And just imagine how many mobile users at $5 a month it's it's crazy to even think. Microsoft, if you need a business a non a business major without the degree, I'm right here, hiring me right now. <laughs> yeah, but that that's all I got on it. I, I I think the scrutiny is unfound. I won't say unfounded, but it it's definitely not warranted. It it it's something that at this point in time there are bigger fish out there like Tencent, like Embracer Group. Although Embracer Group seems to be, you know, they, they're not like kind of like what Wander and Dutch was saying. They're not the type that are going to be in there. They're very hands and, off with their acquisitions. Yeah. yeah. So it, I, I'm not as worried about them, but they keep an eye on them because, hey, if they make a box within the next year or two that is a, you know, a new console, eh, then that kind of changes things yeah. <laughs> a good bit. That's a lot of companies making. That's a lot of developers making the exclusives for that box. Yeah, you know something, guys. Even if the whole deal fell through and the Microsoft just offered to buy the COD IP, I bet you there would still be up in arms. <laughs> Probably. Probably. <laughs> yeah. it's absolutely ridiculous. But great, great stuff. And let 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 let's uh, get Web Dave in here. And then we're going to talk about this uh, summer's big show confirmed uh by jeff grubb and we'll read what he had to say uh web dave you heard everyone but i want to mm-hmm. get your personal opinion on this obviously you are you are a word a worldly minded person uh reading some of the things that are going on uh, it, it's just ridiculous how do you personally feel about how microsoft seems to be the one that everyone is gunning for where everyone else is pretty much running around in pandemonium right um first of all i gotta say that Everybody on the panel is, uh, and I mean, and I mean this, man. Great points today, guys. Uh, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a good topic, and you guys have all nailed it. To be honest, um, I, my personal thing is, is um, there's been a lot of scrutiny at Microsoft in the past, obviously, but we know because we can see it that they've made a lot of changes, a lot of improvements, and you know. When you hear all the good, the good vibes and good feedback from companies that are in Game Pass now, that are employees that work for the company, um, you know, saying that it's it's night and day, or how much of a you know, and, and they've gotten awards and accolades for being you know one of the top ten, I believe, companies in the world to work for. You know, you don't get that reputation, you know, for being you know a bad company. And then you know, like some of the senators, especially Senator to Warren. Not bringing being political, but um, she really is trying to get some brownie points. And when she did that, it was definitely wasn't the subject wasn't <clears throat> what you know what the preview of um, you know of of the merger it was, was about. Because most people know if she'd even looked into it herself, probably had somebody on her staff do it. That Microsoft 
was going to make a big changes and do better things for the employees of the acquisition Especially management, company. which is where the issue is. Exactly, have, have exactly. Been, yeah. And once the deal goes through, then the board is actually dissolved because there is no need for the board. And that's how come, you know, they're going to have to answer to, to fill for all the divisions will have to answer to fill because um, there is no, there is no shareholders anymore. It's, it's Microsoft that owns it. It's their company. Yeah. So now they can set up their own internal panel and they can have meetings with those different people. But, but as far as actual, they'll have control. No, they won't have control anymore. So it's, it'll be all Microsoft. And a lot of people are saying, you know, you know, well, there, there's a lot of red flag. There has been absolutely no real red flags about this merger. The only things that have been brought up are, you know, monopoly and blah, blah, stuff that has no basis and opinion. I mean, listen to the whole law, which you had on guests several times. And every time he's brought us some amazing points. That guy is sharp as attack. Let me exactly. Tell you. And, he and he stuff. is, and he is, uh, you know, he's a lawyer and he knows what he's talking about. <laughs> well, this is, the, this is his business folks. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and, and, and for his, his scrutiny on it, there's like, you know, I, I think there's, there's no way this deal's not going through. I believe what you said that it could, it's probably going to get done before the holidays of this year. I think it's, you know, their deadline or their perceived deadline is next year within that quarter. But I, but, but I guarantee you it's, it's, it's probably a lot closer than you guys. Well, the, uh, uh, I, I, I know, know it's a big difference in billions, right? Well, the, yep. uh, the near $8 billion for Bethesda versus the near, you know, seventy billion dollars for the Activision Blizzard. It's it's it, it is eight times the money. But yep, uh, uh, the uh, um, Bethesda deal only took uh, six months. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and 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 last thing I'll say on this, so because I know we want to get to some other great subjects today, is that um, there's no stopping this deal. This deal is going to happen. Everybody, just take a deep breath, give it the time that it's got to do what it's got to do. But they're, you know, Microsoft has tons and tons of lawyers. Activision wants this to get to get done too. So they're going to, they're all working together for the main goal of getting this finished as fast as possible. And once it's done, we are all going to reap the benefits. It's oh, yeah. Well, awesome it, it's just, that it's, it is certainly going to be an office day. You're going to need a lot of extra uh, space in your hard drives because, damn, there's going to be a lot of stuff dropped in the Game Pass. And uh, I expect an, I expect an invite. To that uh, breaking news episode there, boom, because I'm gonna be on there with you. Oh no, you trust me, you you, you 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 you're in, brother. The bad signal will go up for sure. Uh, it's awesome. Listen, folks, that's been your first half of the show. We're an hour seven minutes in. We got almost 400 people here. If you're just finding the channel, of course, I want to ask politely that you consider subscribing. Uh, we hit 10k this year uh, in January. The goal would be to hit 12, and we're almost there. We're 1500 short from 12k. And I'm hoping that we can get enough subscribers to hit that mighty goal. Uh, of course, you want to say, let's let's get to 100,000. But let, let's get there. Let's take some steps and not leaps. Uh, so the goal for the remainder of 2022 is to hit 12K. And if you are just finding the channel, help me do that. Because we do all work hard uh, on this program. Uh, and, and on the four live shows that I do weekly. And I, I think you're going to dig it. Of course, hit the like button. But before we get into topic number two. Got to thank uh, Scarlet Scarab. Drops an outstanding $5 super chat and says, this is all uh, political. It's an election year and appealing to the voters that are against big tech or are big, de big tech companies. And he's 100% right with that. That's, that's absolutely, in fact, the truth. And we also had Jacob Nova Novak drop an additional $2 super chat and says, uh, if they don't get uh, an AB just by uh, if they don't get Activision Blizzard just by Call of Duty Crash and Spiral, I, I, I listen. This deal is so big, more so much more than just the IPs. It, it's important for sure, but I, I there's just the Blizzard aspect is big. The the King aspect for mobile, mobile. is big. Mobile, it's, it's, mobile. It's mobile is man. Mobile is a is big. Is big. But mobile Game Pass right there. Buddy. Yo. I, I tell you, I tell you, Bobby Kotick, it's time to resign. Your oh, time is up. It's terminated. Arnold's time. Here. What's up, Arnold? How's everything? How you been? Listen, let, let me ask you. Now that you're here, we 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 got you flown in from the helicopter because you know you had to get to the chopper. Um, what would you do if it was just you and Bobby Kotick in a room? 
I don't think my hands are big enough to strangle the little guy. I'm going to put him in the corner and I'm going to show him exactly how real business is done, how real men go up and act and take responsibility for their actions. Now is time. Your time is up. Get out of the way. A pitcher is tired of looking at you, at your chubby ass face up on the screens here, always talking and counting your money. Come on. You got more money than Jesus. It's crazy. Uh, get Go retire. Go sit on a beach somewhere, but get out of the spotlight. Nobody wants to see you anymore. It's Microsoft's time. Get out of here. That's what I'm going to say. I would not want to be in the room with him by myself because, honestly, bad things would happen. I, I, and, I, and I absolutely believe that. Arnold, thank you for, uh, for joining us today. Definitely <laughs> appreciate that. But uh, listen, folks, the picker has done its job. And I have all eight winners. Now, the way this is going to work is mm. if I if you're out of the country, that doesn't disqualify you. If you have PayPal, you have some sort of a cash app, We'll pay the charge for the, to get the money to you. So don't worry about that. Uh, if you are out of the country and you won, because a lot of a lot of the UK followers and, and supporters were like, "Yeah, we, we you know we can't use the codes." Don't worry, I'll just send you the cash, and you buy you buy what what, what you know what what you want accordingly. Uh, no, no, we don't we don't want anyone to be discounted. Even if you're on the other side of the world, we'll find a way to get you the money through one of these cash apps. So don't don't even sweat it. We use we 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 prefer PayPal because it's safer. But we will obviously everyone will, that wins is going to win. So these are the four fifty dollar winners. Okay, Sith Lord, Pragmatic Eagle, Big Bad Mo, and Anthony Chipmunk. You are all the big um, fifty dollar winners. Uh, DM me with what you where where you want the code to Xbox, PlayStation, or Nintendo. And I will get you that code this afternoon. And the four winners for uh, the $25. Let me just pull that up. Give me one second. We have here um, Jay the Destroyer, Doom Reaper, Rahitri Gaming, and Eric the, Eric the Red 06. You guys have won the $25 gift card. So just reach out to me and we will get you those codes. Congratulations, everyone. And again, that's that picker. It just picks the winners. Um, and, we, you know, I just I just read them out. And uh, again, this is one of four big giveaways that we're going to have this year. Congratulations to all the winners. Thank you to the near 400 people that are here. Hopefully you're here for the commentary, not for the prizes. Um, but listen. Once again, congratulations to all of the winners. DM me, and we will get you those codes ASAP. But let's get into topic number two. Now, friend of this program, friend of the community, friend of mine, actually, Jeff Grubb, who I've had on the show numerous times, who was just on, I think, two or three episodes ago on uh, XVlog Live, my new one-on-one -on -one segment that I do on Thursdays, 60-minute show live for you guys to come in and hang out. And I've had some of the industry's biggest uh, I've obviously had Jeff Grubb. I've had Randall Thor, Jez Corden, King David has been on there. Wandering Dutch himself, even though he was under the weather, still managed to hang out for 60 minutes. Uh, Miles Dompierre. Uh, we just had Gaz last week. And uh, this upcoming week, folks, we have Colt Eastwood. That's right. Colt and I are going to sit down for 70 minutes to talk about Something Xbox related in the week after that, folks, I'm going to be sitting down with Asa from Game On Daily and uh, the, the the invitations are going out. So you're going to um, like I said, I'm trying to get some big names on there. Um, but listen, Jeff Grubb, if you don't know who he is, he is a big player in the social space um, and uh, he's someone that I trust indubitably. Well, thanks to Idle Sloth, who is a big time community member, he put out a tweet where he says, and I quote for Jeff Grubb, uh, regarding the uh, Xbox looks set to hold its uh, its E three style showcased in June. Okay, and this is what Jeff Grubb had to say, and this comes to us from our good friends over at the Video Games Chronicle dot com, and Jeff Grubb says this, folks. I probably have more to say on this soon, but it's in June, not in May. Well, they might do something in May or September, but we're not sure. 
Uh, it could be a smaller indie show uh, that he's referring to. It could be a, a smaller showcase for a specific game. Maybe maybe taking a page out of Sony, which I think they should do. They should spend 20 or 30 minutes on a particular game. Give us a big chunk of gameplay of something like Redfall or, you know, or something like, um, well, Starfield is going to be the star of the show. No pun intended for E3, but... I want to go first to um, Wandering Dutch. Dutch, this is, you know, last year's E3 for Microsoft was by far the best in 20 years that they have ever put on. There there were, I, I don't know if I would change anything about the show. Most people, and I mean, even if you were a PlayStation fan, walked away incredibly impressed with what they had to show. So they have a tall task in front of them. How do they re recreate what they did last year? I personally think it's not that hard considering that we still haven't seen some of their big games like Avowed, right? Like, um, uh, you know, Fable and a few others. How, wh what are you expecting at this show? And, and can they be better than they were last year? Oh, that's a difficult one. <laughs> because we said, I've said this, I think it was a couple of weeks back on our show as well, and, and talking about E3. Um, or we're going to, I mean, we're going to continue to refer to it as E3 time because it is still in the E3 space. <laughs> um, so it's going to be hard to get away from that. But yeah, it's it's so difficult after last year. And we've I've got obviously fond memories of, of our show and, and covering it. And you've got fond memories of your show and covering it. And, um, just the reactions of the entire panel for all the different announcements. Um, obviously, we had um, we had uh, one of the Gamers Watch guys there who's who's a huge uh, Disney fan, and and seeing them announce obviously that crossover with uh, Pirates Life for um, for Sea of Thieves um, had him beaming from year to year. Then we're seeing obviously Dodge had uh, the announcement of Atomic Heart going in uh, in the Game Pass Day One, and, and obviously releasing. Um, was was massive for him. Uh, seeing Forza for Forza Irwin was was huge. Um, there was just so many big announcements, so many huge things that were going in there for for everybody um, across the board. And obviously seeing Starfield for the first time and getting a glimpse of that. Um, it was such a good show from uh, from start to finish. And I think it was more for the pacing. And it was just game after game after game after game. And the talking that was there was kept to a minimum. Um, it was the, the layout of the show, the way it was presented. It was just from start to finish, there was very few things that you could really pinpoint that were wrong with it, if anything at all. Um, but I think going forward, and that was only, of course, the, the start. I think going forward right now, they've probably got a lot more to show off for not just the remainder of this year, but going forward, that there's going to be a lot that we are left to see uh, and, and still a lot of announcements that we still haven't seen. Um, so I think, um, of course, we've keep expectations. I wouldn't say to a minimum because obviously after last year's show, I think that they've set their own benchmarks. Um, but I think keep expectations sort of in check to a point where we don't want to expect them to to absolutely blow our socks off like they did last year because that's a very high point to to achieve again back to back but saying that in the same breath they have a lot left to show off we've still got starfield coming off this year that's going to uh, be a big uh, bomb that, I, yeah. I mean obviously that's that's releasing this year so i think that is going to be they're definitely going to show it because it's it bethesda's bethesda's track record is six month to three month prior to launch so i expect starfield to, to focus on gameplay on that one so we will see it um of course then we've also got whatever else machine games has been working on and, and that crew yeah. Um, we've we've got a do lot. Do we of... get a do we get some Indiana Jones gameplay? I think we'll get an actual Something? real trailer. Yeah. Um, because last time it was more just hovering over some icons from Indiana Jones to kind of announce that it's in development. So we'll see something. We'll see more. I think a trailer would probably be good, but I don't think it's going to be in depth gameplay. Um, I think Hellblade's going to focus heavily. I think we'll see more Hellblade gameplay. Um, and we get a release, release date. date for Hellblade, yeah. though. What do you I think? I think a release date's coming. I don't. Nice. I still don't think it's this year, but I think it's going to be coming 2023 and maybe first quarter seems like a good fit for it. Like 
Yeah, it's going to give like a quarter, a quarter of next year. Yeah. Um, probably see Forza, um, and potentially a release date announcement for Forza. Mm-hmm. Um, but I expect, yeah, it's going to be a tough ask for for Xbox to. I think it's more to balance what they have. The amount of stuff that they're producing is a lot. Um, they don't want to just throw everything all in one go. So I think they, for them, it's balancing what is ready to show and what is ready to talk about and what's ready to, to be announced um, with a release date. Um, we don't have release dates for any of them as it yeah. stands, all of the mm-hmm. future projects. So I think it's right now they'll be thinking, right, what's ready to release, what's ready to show, um, what's ready to give a time scale for um, or a release window. Um, and I think that's going to be kind of what they're doing over the next couple of months. And let's not forget, of course, they still have Gamescom as well to produce. Um, so they've got not only the E3 show, but obviously Gamescom to, to talk about there as well. And also figure out a way to get um, the fans back in, involved in a physical um, um, perspective. So there's going to be a lot over the next few months. Um, and, but I think if they do as well as they did last year, um, then we're in for a real treat. Yeah, no, I, I absolutely agree. I, I, look, I, I don't want to say that I'm, 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 I'm expecting better, but I'm expecting better. <laughs> <laughs> only, only because they have so much to show. They have literally so much in the works. Got to thank a good friend of the show, someone I talk to almost every day, Eli Slomovich. Drops a very generous ten dollars super chat. He says, Happy Easter, Ramadan, Kareem, and Happy Passover to this wonderful panel community. Happy Passover, Happy Easter, Ramadan, and Kareem to you as well, my brother. Thank you for always hanging out, supporting Double Barrel Gaming. But more importantly, we talk almost every day. Uh, me, me, him, and King David, we have a, a private DM that we're always talking about, you know, the ongoings of the world. Uh, so it's great to see you here, brother. Thank you for the generosity. Nuf Nukem. You know, one of the big criticisms that have come out of the Microsoft camp is release dates, Uh, release dates for Hellblade, release dates for Avowed, release dates for Compulsions game, which is supposed to be Uncharted meets Bioshock, right? We've been hearing that for years. Uh, we, 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 you know, obviously we know when Starfield's coming. We don't know when Redfall is coming. We don't know when uh, Forza uh, uh, Motorsport is coming. Um, do you expect, what What are your expectations for their big show for this June as confirmed by good friend of the program, Jeff Grubb? And do you think it's going to be led with the release dates that we've all been asking for? That's a great question. And you know, at this point, boom, I don't know what to expect anymore. I'll openly admit I've been one of Microsoft's biggest supporters, but at the same time, I've also been one of the most crucial critics. And but you, um, but you've done it the fair way. You have you every time you've talked negatively about Microsoft, there there has been it's it's been for good reason. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's 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 it just feels like it has been. I, I don't know if the rest of you guys feel like it, but you know, I feel like it, it feels like an eternity now since they came out and announced all the studio acquisitions. You know, between Ninja Theory and obsidian and all these other people you know that they brought into the fold and of course now the bethesda thing and you know at some point you know we need to see the fruits of the labor you know we're not we're not getting any younger i know there's tons of games out there to play and that's always the argument that comes back in my face every time i mention release days is up that well we got so many other games to play that's not the point though you know at some point in time as they say it's poop or get off the pot you know for the lack of using the old s word um, you know, get you got to get stuff done. And, you know, there's only so long you can chalk things up to COVID and all this sort of stuff. You know, we're talking about games that, you know, essentially been in development for now, somewhere it's up to, you know, five, seven years. So we just need to start seeing a roadmap of not just, okay, this is a future stuff, but actually where they're going to drop. And it's time to get, you know, Xbox fans super excited. You know, the hardware is out of the way now. So now it is time to, you know, like to show us the fruits of the labor. It's time to show off some games that really can showcase this beast that we call the Xbox Series X. You know what I mean? Or sorry, yeah, the Xbox Series X um, for the most part. Um, you know, we want we want to start seeing that now. I think Hellblade is obviously one of the steps in the right direction, and we're seeing great things at the Unreal Five engine. Uh, so for you know for this show i don't know i definitely think we're going to see something forza related i think that's almost a given at this point it's been too long without the the flagship racer so to speak in in uh out there i definitely think fable is going to get a real 
a real boost now because they must be somewhere with that game at this point. I think the next one that we definitely see is um, <clears throat> I think perhaps we even see a little bit of the Indiana Jones uh, potentially. Uh, that would definitely get stuff going. Uh, obviously, they're still going to promote Halo, Halo Infinite, what's happened with that franchise or where they're going to go with the seasons and stuff like that. But as far as like that big wow moment, something that's going to blow us all away, like I, I don't think we're going to see anything about, uh, again, any more studios coming into the fold. Um, but I definitely think we're going to see more of the big games that we know about. Hellblade, obviously, um, they're going to show us off more of that. They really got us uh, salivating with the, the last footage that they've shown. So I definitely see some of that. Uh, it's hard to say at this point, like I said, because, you know, we're not in a regular time, though, either. It's, we don't know what's going to go on because it seems like now without the actual, you know, physical E3s and the stage presence that everybody's doing their own thing. And, of course, all the content seems to be spread out over various shows over various months. And, of course, as well, uh, you know, Microsoft now seems to be saving various reveals for different times, including they'll probably have some stuff uh, set aside just for Jeff Keighley's summer games fest kind of thing so uh who really knows at this point i wish i could come out and make this bold bold prediction but honestly i i just don't know there's so much we're definitely going to see something from bethesda um you know i think bethesda would wow the world if they even just showed off the next elden elden uh elden what do they call the elder scrolls uh i was going to call elder it scrolls, yeah, yeah, yeah 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 elder you know scrolls? what i, I yeah, so. I I, th I think that that their Bethesda is going to be very very centered on Redfall, but more specifically Starfield. It it it, it is going to be the big one. I I don't expect anything incredibly surprising from Bethesda. I mean, I could be wrong. I think they need to focus on how great Starfield is going to be because it's going to be the one game, yeah. the one wild card that's going to challenge Elden Ring for Game of the Year. Well, exactly. It's all about peace of mind and what's on the top of people's minds. And I think that's the thing. You don't want to distract your audience away from the stuff that's just, you know, just around the corner by tempting people with stuff that's still several years away. You yeah. know, that that just kind of gets you looking past the targets. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, I definitely think Starfield will play a very prominent role uh, for this show. And uh, again, stuff that's already out, they're going to, you know, talk about future updates of content. And uh, I definitely think we'll see more, like I said, from Hellblade and, and that sort of stuff. And perhaps you want Subsidian's working on. Yeah, no, absolutely. Real quick, I got to thank BMG, who drops an outstanding $2.50, uh, no, a $2.50 pound super sticker. Thank you for that, brother. Um, and uh, all right, well, listen, good stuff. I mean, you're absolutely right. It, it th This year's show for Microsoft is a bit of a wild card only because of what you would both wandering dutch and uh noof had said they have so much in development we don't know what they're going to bring to the table uh, and what they're going to share with jeff because jeff is obviously having his own thing microsoft is having their own thing so they're going to want to be a part of that and they want to and they in the past have done some big things on jeff's show um dreadpool let's get you in on the conversation brother who or what do you expect to be there? But more importantly, can they outdo what they did last year? All right. Well, let's let's think about this, right? We got all these big games we want to see. We want to know the dates. We want to see trailers. We want to see gameplay. We want to know everything, right? But sadly to say, we're not going to get that. Uh, there's just so much going on that what if... This, this May show that may or may not be happening is the indie show that they're looking at doing. So maybe they're doing this to, uh, because maybe there's not enough indies or there's not enough first party stuff that's going to, you know, be able to, um, to, to, to fill the show, right? I mean, the excitement's going to be there. Well, will, will the excitement overshadow the indies that are great indies that we just you know we'll, we'll i mean how many times we watch these shows and we're like uh as soon as halo came on i forgot about the rest i forgot what we just watched you know <laughs> literally right we all talked about it so we'll, we'll it be something like that will starfield come out and they're going to show us some gameplay and then we'll forget about everything else that was shown and and everything from there on will be forgotten too because we'll be still playing the, the trailer in our heads. So 
I think that's probably the dilemma as to why he can't say exactly is this if May is going to happen or not, or if September is going to be something, because those could be the indie section of hey, this is other stuff that's coming out. You know, September could also be yet again the um, we have our uh, end of the year holiday season. Um, here's some other stuff, you know. So trying to trying to figure out that is probably where they're at. That's that's what I'm getting taking out of it. Um, I mean, do I want to see trailers? Yeah, I wouldn't mind. But I also don't want to see games too far in advance. I, I don't mind like a six-month thing where, hey, you know, give me a teaser six months later, give me some gameplay, and a yeah. year later, or six months later after that, give me the actual game. So I don't have years of hype and then a disappointment when I get to the game because I blew it out of proportion that it was going to be the greatest game ever after all these years and it's it's a good game but it's just not what i was expecting it to be you know cd uh, uh cyberpunk right that was one of those games that they showed us so long that you know it's like all right i'm done with it you know put this out and then what did we get we didn't get what we wanted you know what we thought we were going to get so no, unfortunately right. you know um they're hopefully they're Xbox is not going to be doing something like that and releasing another broken game like they like they did with Halo. You know, they they had to be pushed back, right? It had to get pushed back. Was I willing to play it the way it was? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I but was you know, at the end of the day, though, was, that, that, that one-year delay was well worth it. I mean, it, well, it yeah, launched it was well worth it, but in such a great again, fashion. Yeah, but again, it's not even complete. Because yeah. complete would have been co-op. Co-op and Some Forge. sort of co-op. Yeah. You know, Forge... I could I could have let a, you know let go for a little bit, but Forge also could have been something that could have uh, helped, you know. And and here's the thing with when it comes to Halo, Forge is not going to save Halo. Forge is there to help uh, your creativity as a player to do stuff, not to well, make con map. content is gonna is, is gonna save it, and, exactly. and they, they're working on it so. But that's that's the thing. Could they could have waited another year and put everything into it? You know, would we have been happy? No. But because they showed us, they I mean, they anticipated a year ago that, that it would have been out, not this past year. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So it's like this is this is the whole thing of don't show us too much too soon because if you don't make that timeline, how many games have we had so far? Um, be it COVID related or any other issue like uh, what's going on now over there. Um, how many how many games have been delayed over and over again? We've had games um, delayed like four or five times. Where it was it was like the going joke is okay? Are they actually going to do something now, or are we just going to delay it again? You know, when is when is indefinitely going to be delayed? Because this is this is the road we're heading. So, I think part of it is trying to figure out what's good enough to show to keep us happy. So. And, and from last year to this year, yeah, last year they blew it out of the water, but the, the year before that they didn't do as hot. You know, right. they haven't had good years. They've had all the, uh, what was it the Xbox, uh, with Xbox on or something like that, right? The, those, those little mini shows yeah, that were always, the, yeah, the, the full, uh, inside full of, Xbox. Yeah, inside Xbox. They were always full of filler. Yeah. Nothing, they were. Nothing, you know what I mean? And they've learned from that finally, but now we have to figure out what we don't what can they do what do they have they've got a lot of stuff that they could show us but there's a lot of stuff that they probably shouldn't show us you know well i mean, I mean perfect dark how long are we gonna wait for that one well i mean listen that that's i don't think they need to show any more with that that that, that just let that go to to, to pasture and, and just work on it right now crystal right. dynamics is is is, is, head, is headlining that uh development of the game let them make a great game that just let them do what they do and and, and that's it um we don't need to see any more you know obviously i think it opens up more wounds considering all the controversy that came out of uh what's happening with the initiative right so, and and they, they they don't have to they don't have to reiterate that uh, what happened with the initiative is that um they, they from what and again this this is i don't want to take it all take the podcast off the rails but the, a lot of the people that left, and there were a lot of people that left, wanted to take this franchise in a different direction. And Gallagher didn't. Uh, he wanted to be a, a, a traditional, big-budget, AAA story uh, type of game like you found in the Tomb Raider that he did 
when he was at Crystal Dynamics. Uh, and that's Rise of the Tomb Raider, which is still by far one of my favorite games of last gen. Um, and uh, th- these other uh, these other developers, these these leaders that were develop- studio heads in their own their own right, where they came from, wanted to do some sort of an episodic thing, and that's not what Phil and 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 Microsoft and Xbox wanted to do. So they felt like they are their uh, views and thoughts weren't being listened to, and they bounced and they're working somewhere else, and that's fine. I don't want to. Uh, I, I, that's not the perfect dark that I envisioned. I want a perfect dark to be like a spy thriller, which is what we're going to get. I want it to be a big budget, triple A story oriented, uh, adult themed game, and that's what we're going to get from Crystal D. So right, like a Sam Fisher Tomb Raider. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, and I wholeheartedly agree. This is this is why I don't want them showing anything too soon. Mm-hmm. And could Perfect Dark been shown us too soon? Uh, yeah, they probably, but. At the same time, people were calling for it. So maybe they felt that pressure to say, yes, yeah, we are working on it, but this is all you get, you know. But yes. that's 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 why I like the, the way Bethesda does it. You, you know, And I know for a lot of people, that was a, a, a big, hard pill to swallow. You have a limited time to save up that money for this game, but at least you're not sitting there agonizing for years to play this game because they keep on showing you gameplay but it's not true gameplay. Yeah. Well, thankfully, uh, everything that Bethesda shows is in Game Pass, so you don't have to save up anything. Exactly. <laughs> yep. Good stuff as always. Let's let's bring in um, Fuzzy Belvedere. Fuzzy, mm-hmm. everyone's had great opinions, uh, but I'm interested to know yours. Um, <laughs> for me, I am going to take the high road on this and say I'm expecting an even better show. Uh, yeah. Is that going to happen? Well, only time is going to tell when we when, and June is is uh, it's a hop skipping of a jump away. Uh, we're already in the middle of April. May will be here before you know it. And we'll be talking. Holy crap. June is here. You know, m- m- half of the year is gone. But now it's E3 time, even though E3, it's not called E3. I'm always going to call it E3. It's just, it's just it's what it is. But <laughs> you personally, seeing and knowing that Microsoft has well over 50 games in development and that's confirmed what are you expecting us to see because i i think it's time to pull the curtain back on fable pull the curtain back on avowed Mm -hmm. you know some of the games that we've learned about years ago these games have been in development for years and i actually think it's time to 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 lead this e3 by gameplay I, I don't mind trailers. I, I hope they have quite a few trailers because that gets me excited for the future. But I want to know what's coming out this year and next year. And I think release dates is a big part of that. What do you think? Are we going to get this gameplay and release date reveal? I think we will for some games. So I, I agree with uh, Wandering Dutch as far as we will probably get a release date for uh, Hellblade. Just it'll be 2023. Mm-hmm. Um but I, I also agree on on motorsport. I, I think it's time. Um, yep. I, I know they've <laughs> your <laughs> favorite conversation to have. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it, it's it's about that time to show motorsport. I know they pretty much uh, are building this from the ground up as far as starting with a new engine or, or you know, heavily modifying the previous one for these current gen consoles. And I'm, I'm really curious to see how far along they are at this point. And I, I think they're pretty close. So I'm hoping that's something that we can, you know, play this fall, but uh, seeing it in June would be on the top of my list. I, I think we get more gameplay or some gameplay of Starfield. I, I don't think that they want to necessarily make that the big focal point. Cause I think they want to hit us with a couple of surprises, but I, I do believe we will see some gameplay of some star feel. Uh, and I hope they continue with these little episode things where they introduce us to like the companion or different factions and things like that. So I hope they continue both of those paths, but I, I know there's a lot of the media, uh, gaming media and, and, you know, people in the community that are calling for some, some gameplay. So I think they'll, they'll deliver on that. Um, another game that I'm I'm hoping that makes an appearance with, you know, more than you know the CGI that we saw before is going to be Redfall. I know it's it's kind of gone silent. I'm hoping it's still for like a maybe late summer, early fall release. Uh, I'm fine if they have to delay it to you know, you know, work on some things, but you know, maybe see what the actual gameplay is and how 
it may differ from the CGI that we saw. And I, I hope it's, it's along similar lines. Like I, I yeah. think they're going to try probably keep it pretty true to form on that. Um, a couple of other games that I I've been wanting to hear and see more of, and there was kind of like a little bit of it uh, talked about on windows central uh, is compulsions game. Yes. Which, yes. Like, yes. I'm hoping that's kind of like the, the one that's the big surprise where it, we get the unveiling, we get the release date and some gameplay, like uh, you know, all of the above. Type Triple of thing. whammy Although, is what you're saying. I, I I don't know if it makes it this year because I I know that they're still uh, building their team out a bit more, and they're still doing some of the, you know, granular like not necessarily the motion cap stuff, but some of the animation related stuff. So it it might not hit this year, but. It, it's probably within the next two years, if not within the next year type of thing. But I, I think that's where we finally get, you know, a peek at, you know, what, what Phil's been talking about in the background as, as far as some of the things he's excited <laughs> for that we've yet to see. Um, as far as Bethesda, like I, overall, I think the show is going to be a bit better than last year. They, they had a solid formula last year and they know how to build on it for this year and working with Bethesda even more or, or closer for longer. Now they, they will have a, a, you know, better formatted or better laid out, not necessarily better laid out, but at least they they know what we want as, as the fans. So I think they're going to definitely do their best to deliver. And I, I think Bethesda is going to be one of those where we already know about Redfall. We already know about Starfield. And I think there's something else that they're not telling us um some people have hinted at like possibly a quake type thing or well, they have they, they, they just announced that they're doing a digital quake con yeah it's going to be a digital event and we have heard that quake apparently with a female lead mm-hmm. is in uh, in development it's a reboot very similar to what we saw with uh castle wolfenstein and um um, and uh, that would be pretty awesome. I mean, yeah. uh, you know, again, spe- speaking of Castle Wolfenstein, that's that's another one that Machine Games has oh, yeah. supposedly been working on, and and that not not the one with the daughters because that mm-hmm. was absolutely <laughs> freaking terrible. Sorry, um, an actual well, sequel to the last game, which would be Castle Wolfenstein Three. Yeah. Um, I that that's a possibility of one of those surprise stealth drops that we could get this year. Yeah, I I, I think whether it be Wolfenstein, whether it be Quake, something that they've worked on or have been working on is going to be readily available within two months outside of like, you know, Starfield and Redfall. So I, I think Bethesda will have a surprise for us. Um, I, I know it's a little too early for uh, Undead Labs uh, to show some stuff. Uh, Playground Games is kind of the wild card. I think they have a better slice to show us, um, you know, like in engine stuff, but I don't think it's quite as close to release just yet. Mm-hmm. I, I think they're still in maybe the, holiday end of next year, early 24. Yeah. I think that that's one that, that definitely won't hit this year, but maybe next year type of thing. But I think we get to see what the actual uh, in engine stuff will look like. Uh, but, the big one for me is going to be also be outside of you know Forza the next motorsport is going to be avowed. I I think yeah I think we definitely get to see more than the the hint of what it's like what they from what they showed last year and stuff, and I think we get to see a lot more like in not just in engine but possibly gameplay. So that one I think comes out early next year, let's say, but. Um, Obsidian's one, they're pretty much like the, um, I guess you could say the insomniac for Xbox because they're, yeah. they're working on like five games right now. And I think pretty much uh, ground it's ready for its almost ready for its 1.0 full release or out of preview release type of thing. You got Outer Worlds 2 in the background. You got some sort of New Vegas possible, not necessarily a New Vegas because they, they keep on saying that they don't want to necessarily call it that but you got something like that working in the background and then you got another uh like i think they said no that that was in exile that's doing the steampunk one but yeah. uh th- there's a couple of games that they're working on and I, I think avowed is the next one up and then there'll be something else before um outer worlds 2 i don't know if we get even an inkling of that but uh it would be nice but definitely some avowed and i want to see kind of maybe a uh 
even if it's CGI of what NXIL is working on. I, yeah. I, I'm interested. They, they, they keep dropping hints and, you know, they don't want to get themselves in trouble <laughs> and stuff, but mm-hmm. I, I think that might be at least ready for some sort of unveiling, maybe not full on gameplay, but at least in engine or CGI or, or something to kind of give us a concept and, you know, all, all of the other, you know, Microsoft publishing stuff. I think that's, that might be the highlight, like where we get a mixture of indies as well as some of these projects that Jez and Jeff Grubb and a few others have been posting like symbols for, for like the IO Interactive game, <laughs> Avalanche's game and so forth. So, oh, and by the way, yeah, we'll definitely see the DLC if it hasn't already been announced for um, Horizon 5 and then uh, for Halo. Right. So yeah, that, that I, I think it's going to be a, a, a big show. I think it's going to be, at least for me, from my standpoint, better than last year, only because it's it's going to be an update on previously uh, seen content and some new content. And I, I think they got the formula down now at this point where we'll, we'll be all, you know, eyes and ears glued to, you know, our, our screens. Yeah, no, I, I absolutely agree. I, I think you're on to something. And, and just saying that, you know, obviously there is an abundance in in the works and very exciting time for Xbox gamers for sure. Let me just grab a super chat that I've come in from a good friend of the program, Scrub Nurse. I think uh, Nuke Nuke might know who that is. Uh, he drops an outstanding $5 super chat and says Activision will do whatever they need to do to finish it. If they back out, that is a $3 billion payout. And uh, and uh, Beer Baron, good friend of the program, he says this. Uh, he says Hogue was saying, of course, he's talking about Hogue Law. That if the deal falls through, the stock price will completely tank. Lots will be laid off. Could be really bad. And that's coming in from Hogue Law. A guy, guy kind of knows a thing or three about business, especially in the acquisition uh, region of business. But uh, De- Web Dave, let's get let's get to your final opinion, and we'll get everyone out of here, so you can start your holiday weekend off on the <laughs> right foot. Web Dave, what are you personally expecting Microsoft to deliver? Can it be better than last year? Yes, it can definitely be better than last year. I, I have all the confidence in the world that it's going to be a uh, a big show that they are going to, um, you know, they're, they're not going to pull any punches. I think they're going to lay a lot of things on the line. There's a lot of little things that are out there that we, you know, maybe not quite thinking about. Um, you know, th- there's the heavy rumor, I think, from Jeff Grubb uh, and, uh, uh, and from Jez uh, Gordon, Corden, excuse me, that, um, you know, that there's going to be some kind of um, some kind of um, um, golden eye type uh, type yeah. type release. That's something that's that's in the work, a, a remake or a revamp or, you know, that's that's going to come out, you know, and something like that comes out. That's coming to Game Pass. You know, I strongly believe we're going to see Avowed. Um, and then, you know, we may even see some stuff, you know, from like Deathloop. Um, because that's coming, you know, el- eligible to be coming pretty soon. So that's something they could definitely show and push, you know, and talk about it being day and date. Um, you know, Diablo four is something they could talk about. Contraband is something else. There's going to be, um, uh, some things coming from the, um, Elder Scrolls online, uh, that they've, that they've definitely already kind of hinted at, uh, that they're still pushing that game. Um, you know, hopefully we see more from, from Fable, maybe. Forza Motorsport Eight, that would be that would be really something cool to see. Um, there's a lot of good stuff coming, and and uh, Redfall I think is definitely gonna even if it's not coming, you know, this year. Maybe if it's you know the beginning of the you know the first quarter after the holidays, I think that that was something that could they could really show us. And 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 you know same way with Hellblade Two, if it's not coming quite this year, they can at least give us enough that's going to be like. It is coming and, you know, build up the anticipation for the six months, you know, because if this doesn't happen till um, June or July, you know, or August, then, you know, then then we're definitely going to be. Um, and, I, and, I, and I really do think that they have a lot of things up their sleeve that we have no knowledge of at all that are coming to Game Pass, big games. And that's going to be something they really push too. And they, they did it last year's show, and I think they're going to do it this year. Because it was something to emphasize to um, to let everybody know just how much the great value is a Game Pass. And that's something they're really, I think, going to lead with um, this year's show. So that's all I got. 
Yeah, no, I think you're onto something, and I think you're you you really uh you really put it uh you 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 made a mention of a, a, tr- a tremendous amount of games that they could show, so it really is um you know it's it's probably going to be a ninety minute show. Uh, it probably should be two hours because they're really going to put uh, the big emphasis on Starfield. So it should be a two hour show, um, and they really do have a loaded deck. Uh, they can show some. Um, uh, some you know some trailers, some CG trailers, which I know a lot of people seem to be against. I, I'm not against it. You're showing me a game; it's in CG format. Okay, everybody wants gameplay, but sometimes it's not ready to be shown. But I, I think that they do have a lot of gameplay to show us, and I, I honestly cannot wait for June. Um, it, again, E3 is gone, but at least we know that Microsoft uh, is, is out of the out of the big three has confirmed. Um, that they are doing something in 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 in, in E3 uh, format. Uh, we, we can expect to be a treehouse event for Nintendo. Sony's a bit of a wild card. We don't know what they're going to do if they're going to, because uh, we know that they haven't been a part of quote unquote E3 for years, and they've done their own thing. And it's probably going to be like 6 p.m. in the evening on ET like they normally because do. Sony, Sony likes to sit back and go. Let's see what Microsoft yeah. can do, mm-hmm. guys. Make sure you stockpile a whole bunch of uh, mm-hmm. uh, of media things. So when Microsoft drops something, we have a lame comeback about two or three days later. Eh, yeah, that worked. Yeah, that, that that's well that they're petty like that. But listen, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to be your Easter special edition of Breakfast with Boom. Once again, a big congratulations to all the winners. Uh, oh, Elemento Pio, good friend of the program. He drops an outstanding five dollars of chances. How about that new elite controller? Maybe we get that announced. I like that. Mm. I think they knew, need the elite three for sure. And I would definitely be there day one to pre order because I own every elite that's come out and I love them all. Um, uh, uh, but uh, once again, cra- congratulations to all the winners. Uh, I want to say a big shout out to all of the super chats that have come in. Uh, it's these super chats and the channel memberships that allow my wife and I to do these big giveaways and this is one of four uh the the you know we, we try to book in the year early which we've done with the easter one and the, obviously the holiday one at the end of the year and then we try to sneak two big ones in there in the middle um and uh hopefully um you guys and gals will tune in and uh and again if you're a channel member if you drop a super chat you get extra chances to win and most of the time you just win by just being in the chat hanging out talking up a good game and uh, just, you know, having fun. But listen, let's get to the outros and then we'll get everyone on out of here. Start first with the Wandering Dutch. Dutch, you are you're going to be a bit busy the next week or so. Um, what you got going on? But more importantly, talk about your indie showcase to let people know what's going on with that. Yes, yes. So it's uh, it's just shy of one week to go until the indie showcase. Um, that is three hours of of indie games 100 over 100 games shown 12 awesome community creators including yourself um tiki or Sante, um, and many more um some surprise announcements and um, surprise uh, showings and uh I'll, I'll mention it here i'll give you a little exclusive for everybody in chat there we even have a surprise appearance from mr aaron greenberg uh showing up. that is so dope aaron is awesome so um yes it's uh it's it's awesome it's it's going to be awesome i'm doing i'm just going through doing some testing and and doing some proof watching etc for the show um so yes uh, i'm looking forward to for everybody to see that um it's going to be an awesome day there's obviously giveaways as well we're giving away some awesome games so hats off to the developers uh for getting involved and giving out some awesome keys for their games as well um, some that I haven't even released yet uh, are giving away some keys, so it's going to be great. Um, other than that, uh, this evening I'm on uh, Mav Fun Speculations Xbox Ultimate. Nice. Um, on Sunday, um, we have Shepsel Nick, uh, sorry, Special Nick, coming from uh, from Xbox Era for the nice. Weekend Edition. Uh, in the middle of the week, for the full midweek mix-up, we have uh, Insipid Ghost, of course. From Xbox Expansion Pass. Um, and then, of course, we have the awesome indie showcase on Saturday. So, a busy week for us. Um, of course, prime time on Monday evening as well. Let's not forget about that. Yes, um, prime. Yep. Um, looking forward to it. So, yes, you can find me everywhere at Wondering Dutch and, of course, YouTube at Wondering Dutch to catch all of those shows. 
Yep. Yeah, well, thank you so much. And Nuf Nukem, ah, my brother, thank you so much for joining us on another big, big stream. We definitely appreciate you being here. By all means, sell your brand. Tell everyone where they can check out your final uh, Gaming After Dark, which is coming up soon uh, in the next couple of weeks, I believe. And more importantly, where can people reach out to you on social media? That's right. Just to reiterate, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to disappear, like completely drop off the radar and, and stuff. I just uh, going to be keeping the low profile. For good this time. I mean, not uh, not like the last time I just needed a break. This is a bit more than that. Uh, but I will say that Gaming After Dark this Tuesday, it's the one not to miss. Uh, it'll be our final Gaming After Dark with me as with me at the helm. Titan Drago will be there. The middle-aged game guy is going to make his return. Nice. And we're also hoping that Primal E will be back for one Dynamite show. And it would mean the world to me if everybody that I've loved, admired, and watched, and heard, mm -hmm. and everything could show up for five minutes, even in the chat, to say hello. Um, love to see a record turnout for the for the final. Oh, you can I, you can count me in, brother. I'll jump on for ten to fifteen minutes. Confirmed. Absolutely. Would love to see you there. Uh, it would mean a lot to me. Um, after that, yes, of course, this weekend, uh, Good Morning Xbox so with my usual cast of characters and our special guest this Sunday, I do believe, hopefully nail that down, but it should be Dealer Gaming from RDX, uh, looking forward to that, and then, of course, uh, yeah, like I said, so Gaming After Dark Tuesday night, that will be the, uh, the last time I hosted for quite some time, so there you go, that's pretty much it, catch up with me, say hello, come follow me on Twitter, I'll still be around from time to time, and I look forward to uh, doing some guest spots. I'm going to put that out there for anybody if and when the news is big. You know, I, I just don't want to come on to talk about, you know, uh, some mundane stuff. But if the news is big, like around, of course, the essentially E3 week, you know, when the big stuff drops, uh, I, I'll be down to do a few, uh, you know, guest spots on anybody's shows if time permits and I, and I can make it. So just keep that in mind. But that's it for me, guys. Boom. Uh, it's been an honor and a pleasure. Thanks for having me here um great show again today great panel keep up the good work my brother i'll still be watching and following and all that stuff and uh wish you all the best and we'll uh we'll catch up with everybody soon but thanks for making me a part of this uh this week here uh thank you for being here brother and obviously i will see you on tuesday i'll jump on for the final episode of gaming after dark uh sad day indeed but we'll make it a celebration nonetheless uh Dreadpool, by all means, brother, sell your brand. Tell them about Breaking Bread with Dread, some of the new artwork that you got done for the uh, for that particular uh, show, and where can people reach out to you on social media? Yes, uh, as always, first and foremost, thank you all to the chat that, that showed up. Um, I got to throw out a couple shout-outs. Um, Pragmatic Eagle, happy birthday. Today's his birthday. He's I know he said he and he won leave. and he won on his birthday. That's yeah, exactly. Awesome. I mean, what a way what a way to, to have you know start off your birthday morning, right? So uh he'll he'll probably listen to this later on and, and finish off the rest. I think he actually left before uh you called out his name. And then Sin. Sin is actually gonna be opening for KRS one. So if you guys know who Boogie Down Productions is and mm -hmm. KRS one. Oh man, I, I wish I could be there. I, I yeah. that that I, I just to be there, but yeah, congratulations, guys, uh, for all the winners. You know, like I said, you know, you guys make the show. If you guys didn't do this and support Boom, Boom couldn't pay you guys back. That's right. You know? Thank you. Sir. And that's Appreciate that's that. that's what we're all about. We're all about community. So um, thanks, uh, Wandering Dutch, for showing up. Um, sorry, we can't do any beard competition, but you know. <laughs> No cameras today. Um, and then, Noof, uh, thank you. We will revive your corpse in a couple years. <laughs> <laughs> that is the prediction. <laughs> what do you think is happening here? <laughs> Just say is, is somebody putting a hit out on me that I don't know about? <laughs> uh, well, shh. We won't say nothing. Uh, <laughs> Safe well, as yeah. Sam coming to get it, Jim. Yeah, yeah well, you, you just gotta have to worry about that. You never know. Um, so anyway, yeah, thank you guys for for coming on and guesting with us. It, obviously, thanks to the panel members that showed up and the panel members that couldn't be here. You know, I still love you guys, and obviously, boom, the one that brought us all together. Thank you, sir. So now back to me. Yes, <laughs> right. So um, breaking bread with dread on anchor. I'm still working on the next um, guest. I'm trying to figure out when I'm available so I can hit somebody up. I, I have a few people in mind that I'm going to hit up. 
I just haven't been able to do that. So uh, just look it up on anchor.fm slash Redpool. You, you can find it on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. And I actually just did release a video version that I doctored up for the very first uh, one that I did two years ago with Midway Monster. So if you guys check it out, let me know what you think. Should I continue on with um, bringing these older uh, audios back into uh, a visual podcast? I sound like why not? Why not? So, yeah, you know, check it out. Let me, you know, I, I like the consensus so far. Everybody's saying do it. It just, it took me a long time to do it. 20 minutes is like six hours. Yeah, it, so, it, indeed it is. People don't understand that, it's, it's it put video production behind the scenes very very difficult and yeah. time consuming. Yeah, so yeah, it tw- you know like I said, twenty minutes and these these things go for almost two hours sometimes. Um, so hour to two hours that's that's a lot of time to put in. But anyway, I appreciate you guys. Uh, you can look me up linktreecom slash dreadpool all letters all caps. You can find my YouTube all letters all caps. Twitter um, is uh, the O's are actually zero. And they all have links to each other. So if you find one, just look for the information. You'll find all the other places. Nice. So thank nice. you. Yeah, all, all, all of everyone that's a guest here, all of their information, including everything for Dreadpool, is in the show notes. So you got to do is get in there after it goes VOD and just click on the links to uh, support everyone here by sub, sub, subscribing to their uh, outlet of choice. And, of course, on uh, on the socials and uh, on, on Twitter uh fuzzy belvedere brother sell your brand tell everyone about your incredible youtube channel dedicated to the racing genre but also you drop nuggets in there every now and again about what else is going on in the gaming world but where can people reach out to you on social media well just want to thank you for having me on here it was awesome chatting with you guys and going over these topics definitely appreciate having wandering dutch and and uh new new come on here so man Looking forward to uh, gaming after dark with you as far as the the next podcast you do, but man, yeah, definitely don't be a stranger in this community. I I, I know you won't, but man, mm-hmm. always always love your your sense of humor and and uh, the way you look at things on on you know just general <laughs> life or or even gaming in general. Uh, awesome Except having for my the stubborn friends, right? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Also, this having was an old old dog. You just can't teach new tricks. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, yeah, for, for uh, everyone in the chat, thank you for coming out. It was awesome. Congrat! Oh, congrats to everyone that uh, won. Thank you guys for being here and and watching us and listening to us discuss you know our favorite hobby and stuff like that. <laughs> and for for those that want to hear me ramble about anything racing related or gaming in general, you can always follow me on uh, social media at Twitter at fuzzy underscore Belvedere or see some of my racing videos and uh, you know just general videos on YouTube at fuzzy underscore Belvedere. And um, man, it was just awesome to chat with you guys. Sorry for having to mute sometimes. Had the uh, the the lawn crew out there, you know, taking care of business. But uh, man, it was awesome. That's fine, brother. Guys. Listen, that's it, real life, folks. Real life. It was manscaping. Yeah, <laughs> potentially, potentially manscaping for sure. And Web Dave, you've been uh, making the rounds. Uh, listen, tell everyone about your incredible website. Tell everyone about your incredible one-on-one series that you've been doing with a lot of the big-time community members, and where could people check those out and reach out to you on social media? Well, thanks. Uh, I'm going to have a punk soul e- exit today. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, seriously, though, thank you so much for having me on. Um, one, I want to say this up front and, and with everybody here. Um, thank you. Um, and please tell her, tell Mrs. Boomstick, Thank you so much for everything she does behind the scenes to make it happen. Uh, people Thank don't you, know brother. how, how Thank much you. She, you know, we know that you put in so much into the show and she really, really is a big part of that. Uh, oh, you yeah. know, for everything the she patience does and supports you. Uh, of the work that goes on is, is more, it's worth its weight in gold. <laughs> exactly. And it's greatly appreciated. And we just want her to know that as well. Thank you. Brother. Um, I appreciate no, it. no worries. Uh, also great chat today. Fantastic. Everybody was on fire. Um, everybody in the panel, you guys, you know, I love you. Uh, you guys are awesome. And, uh, and, uh, Noof, it was, it was an honor being on with you today. Uh, I think you're a, a great asset to the community. And uh, someday when you're ready to come back, 
uh, to uh, to full time, let me know. I'd love to have you on interview and, and promote all the stuff that you're going to be doing in the future. Because I know that someday you'll you'll get the bug and want to come back. Uh, it's just going to happen. I know it. <laughs> <laughs> also, got to thank uh, we got uh, we got um, a Fuzzy Bell over there. We got uh, Wandering Dutch. Uh, that have been uh, on our episodes of Outbreak Podcast uh, at outbreakpodcast.com with the Outbreak Gamers uh, interviews. And they are both great interviews. You want to know more about these gentlemen? You should definitely tune in and watch. Um, Wandering Dutch does some amazing, amazing uh, work, too, that, that, that if you don't know about it, watch that episode and you'll find out all about it. Uh, also, we have the the big podcast to drop this week. Which was um, which was Eric Cuts for the win, uh, and she was amazing uh, with her knowledge of uh, from software and their games. And then uh, and then the, we got the big one coming Monday. <laughs> the big one, as in two hours long, baby. Big two hours of Dreadpool. You gotta you gotta check that out, man. <laughs> he, he is awesome, and it was a lot of fun. And it's two hours well spent. I'll tell you that. And then the next week we're gonna have one of the one of the big ones. Uh, Randall Thor 19 sat down for an hour with us and uh, he was a great interview. But anyway, lots of great love to everybody. And uh, boom, thank you so much for having me on. And, no problem, um, brother. Thank you for being continues here. Definitely. To be fun. Yeah, no, we, we appreciate you being a part of the, each of uh, the show each and every week. And of course, that's going to do it for Breakfast of Boom for this week. Uh, we, uh, My wife and I, of course, uh, want to wish congratulations to all the winners once again. Uh, have a great holiday. Whichever holiday you, you you celebrate, enjoy with family, be safe, and eat a lot of food. That's really what the holidays are for. You know, put on an extra pound or two. It's okay. Um, enjoy those sweets because, well, who doesn't like a nice slice of cake after with, with coffee after dinner? Because I do. Uh, but listen, that's going to be it. Uh, thank you so much for coming out, supporting Double Barrel Gaming. We had almost 400 people here today. And um, listen, I'm going to close out the show with something that is important to me, folks. Hopefully one day it will be important to you. And that's something that my dad taught us when we were kids. And he said, son, treat others how you want to be treated. And also it doesn't cost anything to be nice. You live by those rules. And I can guarantee you you're going to have an awesome day. So take care, everyone. Happy holidays. And we'll see you next week on the newest episode of Breakfast with Boom.